Almost a decade after the 2010 Deepwater Horizon disaster, there we go. hundreds of scientists are assessing the impact of the largest offshore oil spill in U.S. history. What follows are some of their stories, intimate portraits of research, innovation, and discovery. I'm John W. Farrington. I'm the Dean Emeritus at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. My background has been in the area of studying organic chemicals in the marine environment. I was born and brought up in New Bedford. And my mother always made certain that I had lots of books to read. And among the books was an interesting book that fascinated me about Marie Curie. And of course, those of us who understand the history of chemistry realize that Marie Curie was one of the preeminent scientists of her time and was a Nobel Prize winner. And from that point, it was clear I had some interest in chemistry and one holiday season at Christmas, a chemistry set appeared. One of the things that was very influential was my uncle, who was like a grandfather to me, owned a sheet metal shop, and it was right down on the waterfront in New Bedford. I would go down there with him on weekends when he was checking in on the shop to make sure everything was okay, and while he was doing that, I wandered uh, a block or so away to the fishing boat area on the docks, and so I learned early on from that experience as well as visits to the whaling museum in New Bedford about the importance of the sea in the history of that part of New England. He rises! I did see the movie Moby Dick. I read the book Moby Dick. I think almost everybody in my high school class had to read Moby Dick plus some of the other books by Herman Melville as well. When I went to the Graduate School of Oceanography at the University of Rhode Island, it was required that several of us as graduate students who weren't going to necessarily do our research in the deep ocean still had to go on a deep sea cruise. And so I went on a deep sea cruise on the research vessel Trident, and this was in 1969. Later on in my career, a very important thing happened to me when I was uh, on my only dive in the research submersible Alvin. As we went through the lit zone, and went into the twilight zone, and then into the dark part on our way down to the bottom at 1,500 meters, it surprised me to see all of this floating material and particulate matter and diaphanous web-type organisms in the water column. And right then and there, I changed my way of thinking about particulate matter in the water column. And this has become a, a very important issue these days. That was back in 1976 in July. And we now talk a lot about uh, marine snow and interactions with other things. But several of us were thinking about that beginning in the mid 1970s and into the 1980s. One thing that I have found to be of interest looking back on my career is that I've had numerous opportunities that I had never expected to have to be privileged to discover really interesting aspects of nature that hadn't been discovered by anybody else. These are not big deal things, uh, but they are important things. And when each of the scientists adds those little important things up, then we sometimes end up with something that is really significant for society. And it's been a privilege. And I really have been blessed by numerous colleagues and especially co-workers and others who have interacted with me in the laboratory. And while I can sit here and talk about these things, there's a whole team of people that made this possible and I don't want them to be forgotten. Today, the scientific community is working together to push the boundaries of what they've learned about oil spills and what still needs to be discovered. <laughs>